then maybe write a comet around the solar system. That'd be fun. Cosmos, yeah. another season. Yeah. So do you ever bring the executive producers and writers ideas like what you want to explore? So we have a team of highly creative people. And so um, it's not a matter of what any one of us wants to explore. I think that um, it's what needs to be explored. It's not, I, I need you. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not, I need you to do this because it's important to me. No. Whatever we do do, it needs to be important to everyone. And if, we, if, and if we don't have the talent to communicate that fact, we shouldn't be doing it. Or the insights in, to do so. So all of the ideas, they all come up from different sources. I mean, yeah, some of them, but most of them are Anne, Julian. And, and uh, she's, she is hyper-scientifically, not a scientist herself, but is hyper-scientifically literate. And she's emotionally literate. So she can take the science, fold it with emotion in such a way that the science reaches into your soul, your soul of curiosity, your soul of, of passion for, for, for learning and for caring about what the science means and how you might fold that into to your own uh, personal mission statement in the service of civilization itself. Yeah, we, when we uh, interviewed the executive producers and Anne last time, the executive producers were pretty much saying Anne is the brains, even in the original. Yeah, she was the brains behind look, the show. If you look at the 1980 Cosmos, 2014 and 2020, this one, uh, there's the one common denominator, and that's Anne Drian. She's there for all of them. So she, it, 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 it's her baby. It's her vision. And while each of us could have our own visions, they would be absent the richness, the emotional, psychological richness that she brings to the storytelling. Anne is, a, is, uh, is the rare sort of subspecies of humans who are storytellers. These are people who have been cherished ever since the beginning of civilization. They're the ones that everyone gathers around the campfire and listens to them. They know how to communicate with you. They know how to take information, turn it into wisdom, and create those stories. What do you think the, the original people who compiled all the fairy tales were doing? Why are these, why are these stories persistent? Because they carry some message within them. With science, we have the benefit is that we can tell stories that, that are anchored in reality, right? Not just a, the big bad wolf blowing down a house. It's there's a big bad asteroid ready to render us extinct, or what are we doing to the environment? All of these are forces that previously were never folded into storytelling. And it's the act of storytelling that I think is a fundamental part of the DNA of Cosmos. Really quick, really, just really quick. So when tra uh, travel, space travel is possible for civilians, where would you like to go? Oh, I, I go, uh, give me a good movie account and a book, uh, I'll, I'll, go I'll go to Mars. Definitely. Right. Then maybe ride a comet around the solar system. That'd be fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. All right, All right thank, thank you. So you.